Good afternoon, dear Kenyans. Over the past two years, our government has rallied the country behind the bottom-up economic transformation agenda, the basis upon which we were elected in the democratic elections of the year 2022. We have achieved significant progress in increasing food production by reducing the cost of farm inputs, thereby lowering the cost of food and lowering the cost of living. We have stabilized the economy by preventing what was an imminent debt default. We have stabilized fuel prices, lowered inflation to an all-record low of 4.6%, and we have stabilized the foreign exchange regime. We have implemented radical changes in the education sector, including resolving the CBC question. We have rolled out a new student-focused higher education funding model that has special emphasis on making sure that children from vulnerable families have the requisite support in their education. We have also improved the student-teacher ratio in both our primary and secondary schools by hiring an additional 56,000 teachers and also hiring an additional 2,000 tutors for our Tibet institutions. We have equally resolved bottlenecks in cash transfer program to vulnerable Kenyans, including orphans, people living with disability, and the elderly. We have not only brought on board more beneficiaries, but in keeping with the promise that we made, it is now not the case, as it was in the past, that these vulnerable Kenyans have to wait for months. Now their stipends are paid as salaries of public servants are being paid. We did roll out the Hustler Fund that today benefits 2 million Kenyans. And we have 7 million Kenyans who had been denied access to financial services by credit reference bureaus. They are now off the black listing roll. Our affordable housing program has now more than 100,000 housing units under construction. The first cohort I will be launching in a couple of months to new homeowners. And we have 160,000 young people across Kenya that are employed under this program. To expand manufacturing value addition and agro-processing as a key contributor, uh, contributor to job creation, 18 county aggregation and industrial parks and six new special economic zones are under construction across Kenya. And at the same time, we have 200 fresh produce markets that are at various stages of construction to support our farmers with access to markets for their produce in keeping with the commitment we made to our mama bogas. To accelerate manufacturing, last year we imposed levies on importation of clinker that can be manufactured in Kenya. We made a saving of Kenya shillings 20 billion in foreign exchange as imports of clinker dropped to almost zero. We also imposed 
levies on imported steel billets. And today, we have 11 steel factories that six years ago were closed. They have started operation, hiring 16,000 Kenyans. And last year alone, we saved 120 billion shillings in foreign exchange as a result of this intervention. Our digital transformation agenda is also on course with 17,000 government services online, while we have 274 digital hubs across Kenya with 152,000 students and digital workers in our TVETs and also in digital hubs in different parts, up and running and giving young people an income. Our universal health coverage plan has already onboarded 107 community health promoters and the process of registration for our social health insurance fund is ongoing on its way to launch on the new date of 1st of October 2024 that will make it possible for every Kenyan to have a health insurance and for those suffering from critical illnesses to have access to the critical illness fund, making it possible for every Kenyan to have access to treatment without the burden of having to fund it. On the measures I announced last week, barring state and public officers from engaging in Harambe's, I want to inform the country that the Public Fundraising Appeals Bill is now ready for publication tomorrow. However, even with the progress we have made, I am acutely aware that the people of Kenya have very high expectations of me. And they believe that this administration can undertake the most extensive transformation in our nation's history. Recent events that necessitated the withdrawal of the finance bill, which will require a review and reorganization of our budget and fiscal management, have brought us to an inflection point. Upon reflection, listening keenly to what the people of Kenya have said, and after a holistic appraisal of the performance of my cabinet and its achievements and challenges, I have today, in line with the powers given to me by Article 1521 and 1525B of the Constitution and Sections 130, Sections 12 of the Office of the Attorney General's Act, decided to dismiss with immediate effect all the Cabinet Secretaries and Attorney General of the Republic of Kenya, of the Cabinet of Kenya, except the Prime Cabinet Secretary and Cabinet Secretary for Secretary uh, and Secretary for and Cabinet Secretary for Foreign Affairs and Diaspora Affairs, and of course the office of the Deputy President is not affected in any way. I will immediately engage in extensive consultations across different sectors and political formations and other Kenyans, both in public and private, with the aim of setting up a broad-based government that will assist me in accelerating and expediting the necessary, urgent, and irreversible implementation of the program that we have 
including other radical measures and programs to deal with the burden of debt, to explore raising domestic resources and revenues, expanding job opportunities, eliminating wastage and unnecessary duplication over multiplicity of government agencies, and slaying the dragon of corruption, consequently making the government of Kenya lean, inexpensive, effective, and efficient. During this process, the operations of government will continue uninterrupted under the guidance of principal secretaries and other relevant officials. I will be announcing additional measures and steps in due course. Thank you very much, and God bless our great country, Kenya. Asante ni sana.